been? Has it been like an hour or something? It's a day. Oh! I want you to look at that. My channel died again. Well, that's just great. Might as well go upload a video again. I've been asleep for the past three months, might as well. Alright, so what now? Well, it's a Monday. I think I should just use a microphone, not do in person shots. That'd make a lot of sense. God dang it, I was supposed to get robbed on Tuesday. It's a Monday. I had everything planned out too. I had all of my stuff displayed perfectly so the guy could just come in, come out. Because I gotta replace all my stuff because it all got infected by goo that one time. And we're not talking about that one time. <laughs> you doing in my house? and welcome back to another episode and by episode I mean the start of season 5. Today we will be talking about Ghost Rider, a absolutely funky fresh ride at Knott's Berry Farm in Benna Park, California. This ride is wonderful, I've gotten several rides on it since about a month ago and I can say it is uh, almost worth all the hype and we will get into that later. But let's start off with a bit of a history. Knott's Berry Farm is a very long and complicated history, but I'm only going to go over its modern day stats. It's located in the land of housing prices that could genuinely buy you another title twister. No, I'm not joking. And it is just a really cool park with some cool theming and cool history with it being like something like the oldest theme park in the world. I don't know why I said that so undeservedly. They, they kind of boast about it like all, all all of the time. And this brings us back to Ghost Rider. Back in the good old days of the 90s, Knott's was starting to feel a bit left out from a big corporate gang, and with Disney, Magic Mountain, and SeaWorld all being owned by large theme park chains, Knott's Berry Farm was kind of like, well, why can't we get one? So they did. They were bought by Cedar Fair, so that way they could actually have a chance of competing with the big chains. However, what ended up happening was Cedar Fair wanted to give them a big hyper coaster and a big expansion. Well, yes, this would have been pretty cool for the park, the family that owned Knott's Berry Farm still had a bit of control. And they had one last roller coaster planned that was entirely their idea. And it would be a CCI wooden coaster. Its main purpose was to hang billboards that people driving on the nearby Beach Boulevard could see it and say, Hey, that looks like a cool park. Why don't we go there someday? It would have an out and back layout. In fact, no, not just an out and back layout, a double out and back layout that would allow it to get a really long ride time in and still run a good amount of trains. Ghost Rider would start construction in 1997, and throughout the year, the ride was built, built, and built. Until, on December 8th, 1998, the ride opened to the public. However, because California wants to be California, the residents nearby the park did not like all the screaming coming from the roller coaster that they decided to live next to. So, they were like, no, build a roof over it. And so they did. The ride operated pretty smoothly for its first few years, and then a weird accident happened where a piece of wood flew up and hit someone in the face during the turn right here, which I don't know how the hell that happened, because, like, that physically does not make much sense, 
but I guess it happened, and thus they added metal clamps and metal ties onto all of the track, which, well, yes, it's good in making it sh smooth in the short term and not having more things like that happen. In the long term, well, it caused Ghost Rider to get extremely rough extremely quickly. And because this is Southern California we're talking about, a very dry and hot area, that doesn't necessarily do too well on wood either. So this was essentially a recipe for, yeah, you're gonna have to tear this thing down or redo it in like 10 years. Ghost Rider was critically acclaimed until around the mid 2010s came along when it was really starting to age. The ride had been getting rougher and rougher and rougher and rougher to the point where it was so unbearably rough that not even the best of coaster enthusiasts could really take it for a ride without even having to admit, yeah, that's pretty bad. And this was not helped by the fact that it was in Southern California, very dry, making wooden coasters age faster. There were clamps on the track, not allowing the the track to bend properly, and the fact that Knottsbury Farm is a 365 days per year park, meaning that it was running almost all of those days, putting even more wear and tear on those tracks. So eventually Knotts just went screw it all, and they decided in 2015 to redo the entire thing with GCI's help. And now the ride is so much better. So eventually, after a few months of construction, Ghost Rider finally reopened to the public. And, oh my god, it was so much better. It was smoother, it was more fun, and the new trains made it a bit more comfortable. I've ridden PTC trains, and to be perfectly honest, PTC trains are the most comfortable things ever. But GCI Millennium Flyers, that's where it gets you, and those are pretty comfortable. So now, let's take a look-see at the ride and see how it really goes. You start off by exiting the station. You take a small left-hand turn as you then go down a bit of a drop. Then you take a right-hand turn as you get a preview of the ride's main force, laterals. You go into a bit of a straight section past the transfer area and then into the kinda loud lift hill. You get slammed into the back of your seat as you get pulled up the lift hill, and then eventually you reach the top. And then to start off the ride with a bang, not much of a bang actually, you go down a wonderful 45 degree drop, then into a pretty forceful bottom out, and then into a Florida airtime hill then into another valley that's forceful enough, and then into a less floater airtime hill, into a sort of laterals-ish turn, into another right-hand turn, and then into a sort of floater airtime field drop, then into a weird section of laterals and airtime, and then into another valley giving you some good forces, then into a hill you think would give you airtime, but it doesn't. Then you get another preview of the wonderful laterals coming up in just about a minute, and then you go into a mid-course brake run. That was not here in this POV. Then you drop down off the mid-course brake run. You get an amazing pop of ejector air time as you fly out of your seat, and then another time right there, and then another time right there. And then you get a absolutely crushing wave of laterals, destroying the person sitting to your left. Then you get another hill of floater into a valley, another hill of floater, and then into another valley. And then finally, you destroy the rider sitting to your left as you completely pummel them in yourself as you continue to crush them because of these amazingly strong laterals. And then finally, you hit the brake run. That was Ghost Rider. It's a very fun ride with some very fun floater airtime and some fun and crazy laterals. Just hope you're not sitting next to anyone on this one. And there's the ride. With how absolutely airtime packed and filled this ride is, and even though I don't like laterals, they provide just an even more insaneness of the ride with a feeling like it's trying to just tear you out of the ride vehicle piece by piece. It is an absolute anomaly of a coaster and I love it. And I can say for a fact, I would love to ride a ghost once more. So, that will be it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope 
a good few of you are still here from when I left YouTube with my one year anniversary about three months ago. So, uh, yeah, that'll be it for this video, and goodbye! Oh, you've gotta be f freaking joking in here! Why? God damn it, ghost. Whatever the hell your name is. Whatever. Well, thankfully, the light in the rest of my house is still on, so I'll just...